Okay, I know y'all are going to be excited because for the next three weeks, we're going to go to that chapter that all of you have been, that book you have all been dying to know and understand. We are going to the book of Job. Oh, wow, that was bad. <laughs> Poor Job. Kind of like Thomas, you know? We always say, oh, that Thomas, you know, he doubted. Job, he gets such a, such a rap in the Old Testament. All right, my friends. So we're going to be reading from Job, beginning with the first verse from chapter 1, and then jumping over into the uh, first verse at chapter 2. So we're going to spend some time. We're not going to go through every single scripture or every single line of the scripture. We're going to be looking at a narrative of some different aspects where Job was in different places. So our first verse, Job chapter 1, verse 1. There once lived a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was blameless. A man of complete integrity. He feared God and he stayed away from evil. And then over to chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. One day, members of the heavenly court came again to present themselves before the Lord. And the accuser, Satan, came with them and he said, Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, well, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. And he has maintained his integrity even though you urged me to harm him without cause. Satan replied to the Lord, skin for skin. A man will give up everything he has to save his life, but reach out, take away his health, and he will surely curse you to your face. All right, do with him as you please, the Lord said to Satan, but spare his life. So Satan left the Lord's presence, and he struck Job with terrible bulls from his head to his foot. Job scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, Are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. But Job replied, You talk like a foolish woman. Should we only accept good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all this, Job said nothing wrong. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Aren't you glad today's a short sermon? Because today we're going to have more questions than answers. Today we're going to talk about the fact that, I don't know about you, but this is not my favorite story in scripture. Is it yours? And yet there are some of the most beautiful words spoken about who God is and what God does in this very book. It's amazing. So this is one of those stories that if you take it at face value, if you believe it is the literal, in a literal translation of it, this is why you believe that the God of the Old Testament is mean and the God of the New Testament is nice. Right? God of the Old Testament went around thumping people. Or letting Satan or Satahan thump people. It'd be easy to justify that the Old Testament contained a mean-spirited, unkind God. I mean, look at it. Job is faithful he has integrity. He has never spoken ill. He has done all the right things that prove that he is an individual. He is a man who is one who has God's even admiration. 
And yet, when God is taunted in this story, God allows Job to be the unfortunate pawn between two powers of the universe. I don't like that. Do y'all? It makes me uncomfortable. For Job to be the one who deals with or is the one who is the recipient of what happens when good and evil go to battle. So the next few weeks, we're going to be striving to understand how in the world this happened, how God could allow this to happen. What is this even about? Why would a God of love, a God of mercy, a God of justice, one that we believe in, one that we, when we uh, said that creed together, that is the social creed of the United Methodist Church, y'all. Those are the things that we say that we believe in as United Methodists. We believe in justice. We believe in God's hand. We believe uh, that God is the God of creation, and we are called to be people who watch over that creation. So why would a God of love and justice allow such a thing? And perhaps here's the undoing, the challenge to us all. Somebody even wrote a book about it. Why do bad things happen to good people? Yeah? Why do I struggle? Is there something more? You know, because if we go back and we read the book of Deuteronomy, I can never say that, Deuteronomy, I will always say it wrong. We see time and time again that the commandments say, if you do this, you will receive that. If you are good, you will receive blessing. If you don't do good, you will be dealing with consequences. It says it over and over again. So how is it that if everything in our life is going wrong, why do we even bother to believe? I'm going to guess that probably everybody in the sound of my voice has asked that question at one time or another. Maybe you felt guilty when you did it. Maybe you didn't really want to say it out loud, but somehow you just felt it deep in your heart. So if everything's going wrong, why bother? If we use, if we treat faith like it's a commodity, something to be bartered, then we aren't really talking about faith. If we expect faith to be something that yields us blessings, then we aren't talking about faith. But you know, that's what some people believe. If I do X, I will get Y. If I give some, I will get more. Because you see, if that's the truth of what faith is, then faith is just another thing to be owned. It's another thing to hold in our possession instead of the giant leap of what it calls or what it asks of us to step out in the name of Christ. These are hard questions. I want to read you something. This was written in World War II on the wall of a cellar in Cologne by a Jew in the concentration camp. We all know what I'm talking about, right? This was scrawled, found scrawled on the wall. I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. And I believe in love even when there's no one there. And I believe in God, even when he is silent. I believe that through my trial, there is always a way. 
But sometimes in the suffering and hopeless despair, my heart cries for shelter to know that someone's there. But a voice rises within me saying, hold on my child, I will give you strength. I will give you hope. Just stay a little while. I believe in the sun when it's not shining. And I believe in love when no one is there. But I believe in God when he is silent. And I believe through any trial there is always a way. May there someday be sunshine. May there someday be happiness. May there someday be love. And may there someday be peace. So do I have answers for you? Well, I'm going to challenge you to do a few things this week. If you feel brave, go and read Job. But don't expect to be happy. But this is the other thing I want you to think about. Not everything in scripture, scripture is literal. Remember we talked about metaphor? And we talked about, what was the other one, simile? Allegory. allegory. Metaphor and allegory. Remember when I told you that in the Hebrew culture, that when someone asked a question, they didn't get an answer, what did they get? A story. A story. I'm just going to tell y'all that Job is a story trying to explain what happens when people find themselves in a particular space. And I'm just gonna tell y'all, up to that point, I have believed everything was literally true in scripture before I became exposed to this. And it was like, my heart went, thank you, Jesus. Because it was really hard for me because I had a God who was mean and angry in one testament and a God who talked about love and mercy in the other. But you know what? Always remember this. Scripture, our holy scripture, are words that are trying to describe the infinite, infinite with finite words. We're trying to talk about absolute love through words that in our culture, love can mean 27 different things. You know, from pizza to your dog, to your spouse, hopefully your spouse. Job is a story for us to journey. Because in Job, the writer tries to help us understand that sometimes there just aren't some good answers. But the thing to remember is that even if the sun is not shining, I still believe in the sun. And even when I find myself in a place of darkness and loneliness, I am not alone. And those are words that we need to grab hold of. So this Sunday on World Communion Sunday, we are celebrating the fact that we are one of many denominations, one of many churches around the world who at the exact same time are celebrating what Jesus Christ has done on behalf of all of us. This is a date and a time when we remember that near and far we are people of God and it doesn't matter what denomination, custom, tradition that you have. We are God's people. We are bigger than our individual selves. We, our worldview is to understand that, what was that verse from 3, 6, 10, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. The world. And today we celebrate with believers around the world the miracle of God's great love that would not let us be separated from him. 
Together we remember Jesus Christ because, you see, we are people of redemption. We are people of adoption. God, Jesus Christ gave himself up for us so that we could be reconciled to God. No longer separated, no longer abandoned, no longer alone, but God's people in God's time. So one of the things that I'm going to invite you to do on this day, whether you're sitting in your seat celebrating Holy Communion, or if you choose to come forward to receive it through intention, it's all okay. It's all okay. But what I want you to do is I want you to take some time and I want you to offer up to God some of the questions that maybe you are struggling with some of the places in your life where you just don't get it. And ask God to spend this week, I want you to wrestle this week with those questions. And don't expect it to be restful. Don't expect it to be easy. But I do believe when we go to God with the places where we are hurting, when we're willing to say those things out loud, that is when we find healing. You see, a doctor has to get rid of the infection, right? Before you can start healing. In our lives, sometimes we have to get rid of the bitter root of the thing that is separating us from God or that is keeping us in a place of anger. So I invite you to spend some time in your prayer closet. I invite you to spend some time talking with someone you trust. I invite you to spend some time in prayer, speaking to God, saying, I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to receive the grace. I want to receive the healing. I want to receive the mercy. And I want to be the person, Lord, that you have called me to be in this time and place. I want to be your spirit and your presence in the community around us. And Lord, to really do that, I have to let go of some things. I have to let go of some things so that I can be the person that you have created me to be. Hard work, but so worth it. You see, Jesus knows about hard work, and he knows about how sometimes you just don't understand what's truly going on. Because that's what happened with the disciples. That night, Jesus invited them to a feast. A feast. They came to celebrate the Passover. And in that, they found that things were different. You see, Jesus said, Going forward, you're not, you're not going to understand what's about to happen. I'm going to tell you, but you're not going to get it. But I love you. You see, in just a little while, my body will be broken for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And my blood will be poured out to make a new covenant so that you will no longer be separated from Jesus Christ. So going forward after this night, every time you gather and you do this, remember me. Remember what I have done on your behalf. I call you friends. I call you brothers and sisters in Christ. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. 
that we may be Christ for the world around us, this day and evermore. Amen. His body broken for you. And his blood poured out. 